The all-important budget session in Parliament will kick off today and the issues that will be raised by the opposition during the budget session of Parliament are going to be the issues of farm distress, of Chinese incursion, the demand for a relief package for COVID victims, sale of Air India to the Tatars and the Pegasus snooping controversy. But the issue that's expected to dominate the session is the Pegasus row in the wake of a New York Times report that revealed that Pegasus was the centerpiece of $2 billion weapons deal between India and Israel in 2017. The leader of opposition has written to the Lok Sabha speaker demanding that a privilege motion uh, against the IT minister be passed for deliberately misleading the House on the issue. This letter goes on to state that the government told Parliament it had nothing to do with the Pegasus issue but the New York Times report. It appears that uh, the government lied to Parliament and court, which is why the opposition is up in arms. Let me also get you some details about the New York Times report. It's revealed that Pegasus was essentially the centerpiece of a weapons deal between India and Israel back in 2017 worth $2 billion. The report also referred to Prime Minister Modi's visit to Israel back in 2017. जब हमने ये पूछा भाई पेगासस से महत्व का मुद्दा है इसको चर्चा करो वो चर्चा के लिए तैयार नहीं थे तो इसका मतलब यही है वो देश से कुछ छुपाना चाहते थे जनता से छुपाना चाहते थे और मैं आपको आज तो बताए हैं कि ये न्यूयॉर्क टाइम्स 28 जनवरी 2022 का पूरा रिपोर्ट है ये कि किस ढंग से ये पेगासस खरीदी किया जाता है और किस ढंग से मोदी जी भी वहाँ पर इजराइल के प्राइम मिनिस्टर को मिले और बाद में इजराइल के प्राइम मिनिस्टर यहाँ जब आए वो बातचीत करके जैसा कि इवन बजट भी वो पैगासस स्पाइवेर खरीदने के लिए उन्होंने बजट भी बीच में बढ़ाया so in a few hours from now, the budget session of parliament will officially kick off. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman is going to be presenting, as always, the economic survey for 2021 and 22 in parliament today. The economic survey this year is going to essentially be a report that shows a growth of 9% for the next financial year. The document this year is being prepared by the principal economic advisor and other officials as the new chief economic advisor has been appointed just a few days back. The survey is uh, a report of the state of economy, its prospects and also policy changes. The survey is expected to show the path for the economy for the following year. Let's get to the big political stories of the day with weeks to go for elections. Today, the election commission is holding a crucial meeting. Because as cases have gone up, COVID cases, all political parties keenly await the decision on whether a ban on rallies will be lifted or whether it will continue. The Election Commission is going to be holding a review meet to discuss the same today. Sources in the Election Commission tell us that along with COVID and the Omicron situation, the poll body will also review the vaccination status in all of the poll-bound states. So that's another aspect that will be considered when the EC takes its decision. Dramatic developments expected in Punjab today. Top guns of the state will all be filing their nomination papers. Let me give you a list of who all will be where today. The ruling Congress's CM, uh, Charanjit Singh Channi, who's contesting from two seats, will file his nomination from Bhadhor at 11 this morning. The former Chief Minister turned BJP ally, Captain Amrinder Singh, will file his nomination in Patiala at 11.30 this morning. Also at the nomination booths will be the Akalis. Party President Sukhbir Singh Badal will file his nomination papers from Jalalabad constituency again. This is at 11 this morning. Sukhbir then will accompany Parkash Singh Badal, where the latter will file nomination at the Malout for Lumbi constituency at 12.30 this afternoon.
Looks like the stars are all aligned today. All of our netas in every poll bound state is heading to the nomination centers. In Uttar Pradesh, SP Chief Akhilesh Yadav is all set to file his nomination from the Karhal constituency in Manpuri district, which is SP's stronghold. Uh, Akhilesh will be meeting with party workers at his residency in Sci-Fi, after which he will leave for Manpuri for filing his nomination. There is buzz, meanwhile, that BJP is mulling to field Mulayam Singh Yadav's Choti Bahu, Aparna Yadav, from the same constituency, from Karal, against the SP chief. It's likely to become a Yadav versus Yadav battle in the SP turf. Remember, Aparna Yadav had only recently, a few weeks back, joined the BJP. SP Soberan Singh had won the Karhal seat in 2017 after fetching over 1 lakh votes. We have a lot of people in the party. We have a lot of people in the party. We have a lot of people in the party. We have a lot of people in the party. We have a lot of uh, seriously, later. Meanwhile, the big guns of the BJP are out campaigning in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Home Minister Amit Shah, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, and BJP President J.P. Nadda are now busy with door-to-door -door campaigns in the state. BJP leaders in these campaigns have hit out at the Samajwadi Party. Here are all the details of the BJP's campaign over the weekend. <laughs> The state of war in Uttar Pradesh has turned into a blitzkrieg as the big guns of BJP sounded the pole bugle in the state on Saturday. The BJP top brass held door-to-door -door campaigns across the state. While Amit Shah visited Muzaffarnagar and Saharanpur, Chief Minister Yogi interacted with voters in Bagpat and JP Nadda offered prayers at the Bada Bag Hanuman Mandir in Bareilly. But all was not well at the Amit Shah rally where due to crowding, the Home Minister decided to cut short his door-to-door -door campaign, not wanting to flout COVID guidelines. The 25-minute program was cut short to five minutes. Remember, during his Kerana door-to-door -door campaign, there was heavy backlash on social media about violation on COVID guidelines and probably that's also another reason why this time he ensured that uh, the guidelines are not violated and because it was violated, he cut short his 25 minutes program. But in his campaign in Muzaffarnagar, Shah went all guns blazing at the Samajwadi party. Chief Minister Yogi attended the Prabhavi Maddata Samvad and conducted door-to-door -door campaign in Bagpat. He too didn't leave an opportunity to hit out at the Samajwadi party. Mujaffanagar, Nirdos Hindu bhi maare gaye, unpe mukadme bhi tarji kiye gaye. Aur jab un mukadmo ko hamari sarkar ne khariz kiya ki nahi, sab farji hai. BJP National President JP Nadda also conducted a door to door campaign in UP's Bareilly after he offered prayers at the Bada Bagh Hanuman Mandir there. It's a high pitched battle with charges flying thick and fast. A war of words erupted between Amit Shah and SP Chief Akhilesh Yadav over the farmers' protest. जिस तरीके से किसान अपमानित हुए थे, मैं बधाई देना चाहता हूँ सभी किसानों को कि जिनकी हिम्मत की वजह से, जिनकी बहादुरी और साहस की वजह से किसानों के आंदोलन ने भारतीय जनता पार्टी को झुकने के लिए मजबूर कर दिया। और अंतोगतवा भारतीय जनता पार्टी को तीनों काले कानून वापस लेने पड़ गए। अखिलेश भाई, आपका और सपा का 10 साल सरकार रहा, पुरानी छोड़ दीजिए। विशुद्ध सरकार 10 साल रही, किसानों के लिए आपने क्या किया? जरा लेकर आइए, हम पूछना चाहते हैं।
Not only this, on Friday, Samajwadi Party chief also accused Shah of violating COVID norms. Bharatiya Janta Party ke log parcha bhi paant rahe to karuna phenane ke liye paant rahe se karta. Aap ko yoh kya dhe nahi 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 as polls near, tempers are reaching fever pitch in the crucial state. The big question is, who will have the last laugh? Which rare Chatterjee, Bureau Report, India Today. Here on India Today, for the last one week, we've been getting you all the updates on the investigation into the Tanjavur minor suicide case. And now there are questions being asked on whether there's a bid to cover up the case. Sources in the National Child Rights Panel say that the State Child Protection Body is stalling the probe into the suicide of the 17-year-old who allegedly took her life after being harassed by her school to convert to Christianity. Here are the details. It's been more than 10 days since suicide of the 17-year-old girl in Tamil Nadu's Tanjaur after allegedly being forced to convert by her school. The case has now turned into a flashpoint between the Tamil Nadu government and the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights. Sources close to India today revealed that the State Child Rights Commission under the DMK government is not cooperating in the probe and is reluctant to extend help to the central panel. A team of NCPCR headed by Chairperson Priyank Kanungo is probing the case and is likely to find out if the girl was under pressure to convert to Christianity. Sources in the Child Rights Panel allege the DMK government has been citing the Model Code of Conduct for civic polls and stonewalling the probe. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tamil Nadu BJP leaders met the family of the victim and gave 10 lakh rupees help. In the very unfortunate issue, a 17-year-old girl committed suicide. The Bharatiya Janata Party has visited their family and we have consoled them and we have given them a cheque of 10 lakh rupees so that we are very sure it will be of help to the family. At the same time, we have assured them of complete justice and BJP will stand with them thick and thin. The Child Rights Panel is seeking the view of the parents of the victim and the doctors who treated her and conducted her post-mortem. <laughs> Apart from speaking to the minors, classmates, school authorities and eyewitnesses. <laughs> This video of the Tanjau student who ended her life on January 19th had brought a whole new angle in the case. In the video, the student says she was targeted and harassed constantly by the warden and was tortured to convert into Christianity. Bureau Report, India Today. Another story that we're getting you the latest updates on the leader of Canada's National Democratic Party, Jagmeet Singh, has been caught now in the midst of an ongoing truckers' protest in Canada. Hundreds of truckers have poured into the capital city of Ottawa, protesting against the vaccine mandates required for cross-border travel. Uh, in fact, the NDP chief has denounced the ongoing protest, but he's been trolled by netizens. The leader supported the farmers' protest last year and took to Twitter saying, no farmers, 
no food. Now netizens are calling out this leader's hypocrisy over the issue of free speech. They're retweeting Singh's tweet from last year with the header, no truckers, no food. To the leader's further embarrassment, his own brother-in-law has donated $13,000 to the truckers' protest. The leader subsequently come out and said that he unequivocally disapproves of his brother-in-law's decision. Jagmeet Singh has been a controversial leader when it comes to India. He's openly extended support to Sikh separatists time and again and opposed the obligation of Article 317 Kashmir as well. It's a comeback that will be remembered for years to come. Rafael Nadal scripted history at the Australian Open on Sunday. The Spaniard won his 21st Grand Slam and is now one major title clear of his biggest rivals, Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer. Nadal won his second crown at Melbourne with one of the finest performances of his career. Here's how he denied Russia's Medvedev in the grand finale that everyone's talking about. Rafael Nadal, Australian Open champion. The first man to win 21 Grand Slam titles. Nadal scripted history at Melbourne Park by defeating pre-tournament favourite Daniel Medvedev. It's the miracle in Melbourne. And his record-breaking victory was a grind of the highest order. It was a contest for the ages. A gruelling encounter that lasted a marathon 5 hours and 24 minutes. Nadal put on a masterclass showcasing tenacity, grit and determination. Winning the match after losing the first two sets makes his achievement simply extraordinary. Runner-up Daniel Medvedev who many consider as the leader of the next generation of tennis stars, was also amazed by Rafa's enduring display. It is truly majestic from Medvedev. I want to congratulate Rafa because what he did today, I was, uh, I was amazed, like, uh, especially, I mean, during the match, I tried, uh, I tried just to play tennis, but after the match, I just, you know, asked him, uh, like, are you tired? <laughs> because uh, it was insane. I mean, it, I think the level was very high. So... Again, I with mean, his second Australian Open, kid, Nadal went past Djokovic and Roger Federer, both of who were tied at 20 majors along with the Spaniard before his record shattering victory. And close this out in the <laughs> Nicknamed Spain's Raging Bull, Nadal got emotional during the winner's address. He thanked the fans for their support, stating he'll most likely be back to defend his crown next year. Well, uh, one month and a half probably I, I will say that maybe there is a chance that that's going to be my, my last Australian Open. But now that's plenty of energy to, to keep going. So thank you very much. I... I can't, I really can't explain the feelings that I, I have right now, but I'm going to keep trying my best to keep coming next year. Thank you very, very much and see you soon. In the manner that he did to come back... But next up for Nadal is the French Open, his favourite Grand Slam. And the King of Clay will be hoping to stamp his authority as the greatest of all time in Paris in a few months. Fitz, are you still with us? I'm, I'm Sports Bureau, I'm, I'm India today. Covering. Are you <laughs> marinating <laughs> in the madness of Melbourne? Well, uh, look. So Nadal has created history at the Australian Open, becoming for the first ever to win 21 Grand Slams. My colleague Nikhil Nas spoke exclusively to former Indian tennis player Vishal Upal on this historic win.
joining me is Vishal Upul, former India tennis player. He's played Davis Cup for India and has had the privilege of traveling the world over. He's also been the coach of the Indian uh, national women's team in tennis. So uh, we'll get Vishal to, you know, do all the talking about this incredible match that we witnessed. Firstly, Vishal, I'm running out of adjectives. I don't know uh, whether to call it miracle in Melbourne, whether to call it heart stopping. Can you help, help me out with a few adjectives or one adjective that would help you describe what we've just witnessed over five hours of slam bang tennis? Yeah, it was a miracle in Melbourne and definitely that was some heart stopping tennis. <laughs> the way the topsy turvy nature of this match was incredible to watch. Uh, and you know, I mean, what a resilient uh, human being, what a resilient player uh, Rafael Nadal is to come back over and over and again after so many injuries. I mean, hats off to this guy. Like like you said, I mean, we are running out of adjectives for this guy and uh, to, have, to have created history today is uh, just an unbelievable moment for him and for his family and all those who support him. Hmm. Uh, most people would, would wonder, uh, on one end you have a 35-year-old Rafael Nadal, on the other end you have a 25-year-old Medvedev. Now, 10 years in professional sport is a major, major difference, may not be in professional life or in jobs that, you know, people, folks like us when sitting in office do, but in professional sport, 10 years is a massive difference. Then it goes to five sets. What is it that Nadal had? Where did he get that reserve energy to even beat an opponent 10 years younger than him in a match that almost at six hours. Well, I think uh, I think the biggest attribute for a guy like Nadal is his mental, uh, you know, thought process. The way he's so resilient, he never gives up. Come what may, if you look at all his matches, not just today, even in the past, the yeah. intensity that he brings to the court, the focus that he brings to the court, is second to none. And I think that's what really has, you know, kind of differentiated him in today's match, specifically speaking. If you saw how he remained, uh, you know, disciplined uh, pretty much when, when you know, they reached the business end of uh, even a game or a match or a set. And and Medvedev, I would say, somewhere, I think, you know, maybe a little bit more experienced uh, where he can weed out uh, some of these errors that he made uh, uh, today. But I think uh, the greatest attribute of Rafael Nadal is his mental fortitude, his mental strength, how he will not give up and that puts so much pressure on your on the opponents because they know he's not going to give up he's going to keep coming back at you so you can't afford to slip up and Medvedev did slip up a little bit today which cost him dearly and for all the highlights of that epic Australian Open final and much much more remember to always log on to our website indiatoday.in you can also download the India Today app that's it from me thank you very much for tuning in